Hey, welcome to the Canadian version of Mist Uru. Uh, there might be various amounts of copyright throughout this playthrough, I don't know, but here in this part one, there's already a Peter Gabriel song. Thanks! Uh, we used to be a nice, cohesive universe that was separate, but then Mist 4 messed everything up and they were like, let's use copyright songs, and I'm like, thanks. Well, normally it just means I don't get money, which, you know, sucks, but I'm used to it. Uh, but this is blocked in Canada, so... I can't upload this to Canadians unless I change this one part, and maybe future parts. So if you encounter blocked videos in the future in this series, look for an alternate version later that day, maybe, or something like that, hopefully. Uh, I'll, I'll try to get on top of this. You, you can do it. You can do it, Cyan Logo. You, you can do it. That's not a good sign. Yeah, that Kickstarter really pulled through. They they made it work on modern systems, you guys, just like they promised. As I'm being a little too harsh, too fast, but I'm just like, oh boy, that's not a good sign. Did I hit escape. Well, that stopped it. <laughs> Is that good? Hey, a loading meter. Hmm. It's showing up as 4x3 in the recording, but but widescreen on my screen, so it's probably stretched on my screen. And it's probably rendering in 4x3 for you guys, and also the game. We'll see? Alright, another loading screen. Alright, another loading- oh, this one's slower. Oh, never mind. Uru monitor, monitor calibration. Set your monitor's uh, uh, set your monitor's contrast to one hundred percent as high as it will go. Look, oh, the cursor! Look at it lagging around. Uh, adjust your brightness control until you can barely see the Uru logo above. I will do none of those things. There we go. Hello, this is some <laughs> not the first image that comes to mind when you think of uh, when you think of a mist game, huh? It's, uh, oh boy. What's up with the frame rate? Alright, let's, uh... Let's maybe quit out and try again. Let's do some research. Oh, the whole reason I waited before playing Uru... ...is because I wanted to play the finished version that just runs well, because they promised that in the Kickstarter. Oh no. Hey, the logo's running. That's probably good. I said where I set everything to default, so anti-aliasing and anti-filtering is turned off. The game's running in 800 by 600. Uh, textures are set to high, but yeah, you think I'd be my computer could run everything because it's you know a 1070 uh, and so on and an i7. But sure, let's do default. <gasps> the mouse. It moves like a mouse. That's a good sign. <gasps> the thing, it moves like a thing. Alright, let's see if I can get past character generation and then maybe the game will run better or something in the real world. I don't know. You can have so many hair options like guy and also guy. Look at, look at ponytail man. Oh, there's a little arrow that leads to more. Oh, a little bit more. One more row. Okay. Age build? I see. Would you like to be ungodly slender? Like, uh, worryingly slender? You got just the thing for you. And then age. Oh, it moves after you let go. Sure. I'll get like a little bit over there. Why not? Uh, these facial hair options. You can have beard and mustache and other thing. Soul patch. Sure. Wait, texture? Oh, we're like picking a texture. He looks very old very quickly when you go down that line, don't doesn't he? So yeah, welcome everybody. We're playing Mist uh, Mist Uru the Complete Chronicles or something like that. Whatever they called the the single player version of it that came out eventually. This is a weird feeling. 
customizing this. So this is good, this is the black sheep of the franchise. It was pretty much doomed to be that regardless, uh, whether it was good or bad, because it's just so different. Uh, they made a... They made a... They made, it was an MMORPG. No, sorry. It's reflexively added the last three syllables. But they, uh, they, yeah, they made an MMO. Oh, you can make yourself green. <laughs> I was basically green for a second there, wasn't I? Yep, that... Um, that's a zombie color skin. There's like something slightly wrong about it at that age. Oh, yep, there's that's just white. Just actually white. Uh, so the, it was a really cool idea. They wanted to make an online multiplayer co-op slash collaborative community thing where you customize your characters so you can talk to people and so on and play through a mist, something that takes place in the mist universe at the very least. Uh, these, none of these skin colors feel right. They're all, they, they're like, they all feel like impossible colors just a little bit. <laughs> huh. I've never been more conflicted in my life. Uh, so they, they made this big multiplayer thing and, and then it failed very quickly, uh, unfortunately. And so they also made this, uh, single player standalone version. Uh, unfortunately it doesn't have all the content that the multiplayer one had, but also some of that multiplayer stuff requires you to be in multiplayer in order to do it. And so that's just a whole mess of its own that you don't want to get into. Uh, there are people that play it right now, it's just I don't... It's a little rough to deal with that mid thing. I've been told that the best thing to do is probably to play the single player version because that's the version that actually has like an ending and stuff like that. I really wish I had not customized anything about this guy's face. Everything, every time I touch one of these sliders, it only feels like I'm like things are getting worse. I'm just like, what am I doing? I'm so sorry. Oh. The, dr the dramatic camera, the dramatic changes on the character on the guy's face. A wider chin makes sense. You can't rotate him, can you? Not left and right click don't do anything. Arrow. Oh, ah, the arrow keys rotate him, at the very least. Okay, but he's like physically rotating, so he has to like reset his stance when he when he's done, which is a little weird. Let's see, you can give him glasses or other glasses or other glasses. Sure, get him uh, eye color and glasses color. Not quite what I was going for. There we go. This is bordering. <laughs> Some of this is bordering on being correct to appearance ish <laughs> uh so you still customize a character and that's because we, uh despite, despite despite the fact the game's no longer online we're still going to be wandering around the environment as this dude so they still have to make a dude no i don't want to reset my changes i want to get to the other stuff how do i get back to everything else the this interface is is something oh there we go okay i'm figuring it out Here's where we start dressing our dude up. Ah, crap. Dressing our dude up. I keep trying to press the other button. Oh yeah, you can see him rotating now, where he, he actually physically turns around. Oh, that backpack looks really weird when you turn. Ah, you can customize the color of the sweatshirt. Shirt. I'm like, why doesn't it match the appearance? You get a polo shirt, you get a little adventurer shirt, you get a Nathan Drake shirt. <laughs> Look, I'm protagonist of many Nintendo 64 shooters. You can have a sweet leather jacket. <laughs> So if you wear a t-shirt, you can wear a design on it. There's the Mist Island, but in in an incomprehensible mush of low-resolution textures. Riven. None of these logos match what these pictures say. That looks different from that in a weird warped way. The Riven one just straight up is a different design. That has a dagger on it. This one's just the logo. This one's Cosmic Osmo. There's only, there's only, there's only three decal options. Surprisingly slight for a, a layout like this. I might actually go with a I am Nintendo 64 man shirt. What is, are those just loops around his arms? They just are. Okay, let's go with the let's go with the shirt that, that makes us look like we're from supporting cast of Jurassic Park. All right, white's a little too white. Oh boy, we can customize you thoroughly. All right, just make it a nice beige 
And the undershirt can be any color. White makes sense. Sure. Fingerless gloves or just actual gloves. Okay. Or or barehanded. Let's give him some nice gloves. Let's give him some nice brown. Yeah. Actual gloves. There we go. Make him look like not a crazy person. Cargo pants. You got, you got so many designs. The the wet yourself version. We got shorts. With no belt. Cargo shorts. Jeans. And khakis. Let's just go with jeans. I can generally deal with this guy, probably, for a game. We'll make it work. Oh yeah, feet, right. Barefoot. <laughs> oh. Sandals. Bare, bare toe sandals. You're gonna go on like a big old archaeological thing. I think, I think this game, I think you see this guy go out in the desert and stuff like that or something. Like he probably shouldn't be wearing like laceless slip-on shoes. That seems dangerous. None of these are boots though. I can't pro I can't put proper like OSHA approved boots on him. I can do these guys. Yeah, there we go. That they look like boots if you just don't know what's under the pants. So that kind of works. Uh, yeah, this looks like me sometimes. It looks a little bit more like some of my professors when I was studying geology. <laughs> but this is more or less what a lot of people would dress like when we were going on our expedition. So this is fitting. Enough. Sure. How do I say yes? There we go. Uru. I gotta press the Uru button. Isha, last night your mother had a dream. The dream tells that the ancient Dunny city will grow again someday. New seekers of Dunny will flow in from the desert, feeling called to something they do not understand. But the dream also tells of a desert bird with the power to weave this new Dunny's future. We fear such power. It changes people. Isha, our desert bird. Your search seems to take you further and further from us. I hope what you find will bring you closer. Here we go, we're in the game proper. I've heard that I might be able to force the game or even mod the game into widescreen once I'm past the opening cutscenes because the opening cutscenes will break it and send it back to 600 by 800 or something. Uh, so arrow keys are, yeah, tank controls walking, shift is run, F1 changes my view, F1, okay. Spacebar is jump, we have jumping in a missed game, alas, at long last. Or you can left click to walk, left and right click to run, like in an MMO, actually, yeah. Right click, look around, left click clicks on things, walk backwards with middle mouse. Normal and novice? <clears throat> I don't know what that means. What's normal and novice? I click on this question mark? No. I... Oh. Question mark. Game settings? Gamma. Ooh, yep, that, yep. Does it affect your... Nope, that only affects my screen and not the game. Gamma's interesting how it works that way in, like, everything, apparently. Invert mouse look. Bunch of other things. Stay in first person. Just boot that option. Resume Uru. This isn't first person. You lied to me. You lied to me. Go to where I click. That's an interesting option. For people that want to have uh, just an entirely mouse-oriented game, that's a good option. Let's see. Calib uh, it's just the calibration screen again. Key map. E experience. Oh, these are the credits for the game and the expansions. 
So game settings does not feature any graphical settings besides displaying shadow toggle and shadow quality. You cannot change the resolution from here or visibly save. Oh, really? WASD isn't move. Right, because it's, uh... You guys mapped moving to the arrows like some weirdo. Well, nothing else is mapped, right? No. So I can just map whatever I want here and we're fine. So forward, backwards, left, right. There we go. Sh yeah, shift and spacebar, but, but then mouse key buttons? This game is old if they thought that was reasonable controls. There we go. It makes more sense now. And the C is run. Look at him go. Oh, uh, man. That's the that's the running gate of somebody who sells propane. Okay. Jump. There we go. How well do you handle barbed wire? Oh, like a pro. That's a that I'll give him that. That's a bat. That's a that's that's a full committed jump. <laughs> he just cleared that rock. He's a real boss. I gotta say, uh, the game looks like it's... The game actually looks like it's on the proper resolution on my screen and that the recording is 4x3, almost like that's wrong, but I could be wrong. It just it looks weirdly skinny. No trespassing. We're just out in the desert. We're just dumped here, like, no context, none of the... None of the dense surroundings of weird, cool shit to look at that you usually see. I'm hoping it's a bit- I'm hoping it's just like a bit of a... slower intro. It makes sense, you, uh, if you're playing an MMO, you would just spawn a bunch of dudes. Look at that walking backwards animation. You would just spawn a bunch of dudes all in one location, right? And so getting that away from the stuff where interesting stuff's going on would be a nice little... break, because you don't want like a hundred people to spawn and just be standing in the middle of, like, the place people need to do things in. That's a nice little intro. As you come running in, the mu music starts to come in. Sort of setting the tone for the location. Another song playing here. All right, that's enough intro. Let's see if I can fix the resolution. <laughs> Would you look at all them pixels? Look at all them pixels we got all of a sudden. Isn't that nice? So yeah, I had to run something called the universal widescreen adapter type thing, which more or less dealt with the issue. Uh, quote unquote universal, pretty much spans like a dozen games from around 2002 to 2005. So like KOTOR is on there and this game's on there. That's the timing of it all, of course. This game must be like the missing link, right? Cause like, we have four games that are all taking place in Atrus's worlds and whatnot. But here we're just, we're just on Earth? And like abduction seems to, an abduction they say they say something from the Denis language or apparently, which might be an Easter egg or might be suggesting that abduction takes place in the same universe as mist or something. Uh, and abduction has elements of it that take place on Earth, so maybe this is some of that missing link a little bit because this is just like Arizona or something around here. A little unfortunate that two songs are playing at the same time, one of them from this guy and one of them from the soundtrack. Hey buddy. I will now try to repeat after what the guy says, because this entire scene is copyright blocked. Uh, cause it's playing a Peter Gabriel s s song in this background, which I also need to replace. Hey. Welcome. So, uh... I'm Zandy. I probably know more about why you're here than you do. Don't worry about it. You felt drawn here, just like the others. I'm not really here to give you answers, just give you help to get you started. She's left a message for you in the cleft. Listen to it well, follow her, find the journeys, and then enter the tree. Oh, and uh, check with me if you need help. 
she left me clues? Something on the... I think you said the cliff? Are there subtitles? Smoother camera. I'm not really sure what that means. Let's check that. Shadows. Those things. Mute sound is an option. Mute sound's a hell of an option to have in a game that doesn't have subtitles. Alright. Well. Things happen. What's what a smoother camera? Oh, right. No, no smoother camera yet because I'm still here. Can I click on this thing? Nope. Alright. Gonna back it on up. Alright, smoother camera, you said. Is that any smoother? I don't know. <laughs> Bunch of stop signs and stuff. I really don't know what I'm getting myself into here. Like what this game's about, or generally- Oh, there's like a ravine! Can I push this? Can I pull it? No? You try it on that side, try it on this side? Hmm. Do I have to hold down the mouse button? Nope, that doesn't do it. Alright, there's ladders here, there's a big old ravine. Oh yeah. Okay, now, now this makes more sense. I was looking at all those surroundings. Oh, the camera's kind of fixed at pointing down there. I was looking at all these surroundings. I'm like, this is just a flat area with nothing in it. But he mentioned the cliff. Like, oh, you must mean go down here. Oh, he's going that way. No, I want you to use the ladder. There we go. I didn't want to walk off the cliff. I wasn't sure if it'd be safe, so I tried using the mouse to direct from there on. Oop. Fell a little bit. You know what? Let's just hold shift and click over here. You know? It's not really working, is it? Ah, I was on the edge of the camera. Oh, Jesus. He did the jump all on his own. How do I interact with things in this point and click game? I guess you just click on them, right? That's what it said. Is I click on something to interact with it? So I, I guess it's a closed door I can't do anything with. These tank controls. Can you climb through the window? Get in there. Don't be a coward. <laughs> uh, I'm a little afraid of this guy's ability to navigate. Oh no, he made it. If you just click on it and hold shift, he'll he'll make it. Oh, this is going to be the strangest game. Alright, well, there's like a lever over here. A pedal. I did my first interaction, you guys. I did it. Hooray. Alright, so... If I put something in that, it, it must be... I must be able to lower it like that. I suppose. There we go. No, go that way. Alright. <laughs> Pressing shift and then just clicking where I want to go does not solve all my problems. Alright, this cliff doesn't seem to go anywhere. Hand thing? Cool. Ah, right. The cur the cursor gets a reticle inside of it when it's when it's going to do something. At least sometimes. Oh, now I'm wet. Oh, it's got to be so stagnant. 
Oh, it's just sitting here. Gross. So we're in a cave, not really a cave, we're in a ravine that seems to be a dwelling. Like, people lived in these little side pockets, it looks like. This area's even carved up. Like, they they carved into the stone, but only in this specific spot. <laughs> oh, it did something. That's a familiar sound. That's like a linking book sound. This guy's first response to seeing a handprint is just, put my hand on it. It must power something. Maybe he already knows a little bit. But oh, that's like modern looking paper. A little less so, maybe. Oh, it says Yusha. Hang on, let me take a drink. Our dearest Yisha, last night your mother had a dream. We know that some futures are not cast by writer or maker, but the dream tells that Denis will grow again someday. New seekers of Denis will flow in from the desert, feeling called to something they do not understand. But the dream also tells of a desert bird with the power to weave this new Denis future. We fear such power. It changes people. Yisha, our dear, our desert bird, you, your search seems to take you further and further from us. I hope that what you find will bring you closer. Your father, Atris. I will, it says in different text in red, it says, I will use them to bring me the least impossible? I will use them to bring me the least impossible. I think it says up top. What I have learned must be... Unlearned? I can't read that. <laughs> it's really hard to read. Returned? What I have learned must be returned. What's the side thing say? New... Now his something is mine. Now his gen. It almost says it almost looks like it says gender, like his gender is mine. What does that mean? What does it say? Oh, now his burden is mine. Oh, that's less uh, arcane than I thought. <laughs> Oh, and the bottom one says, what I have found must be returned. Man, I love cursive. I love it so much. Oh, there's goggles. Uh, Alright, they're on me now. They just plopped right on. Not getting any pop-ups around here. Why do you do that? I'm clicking out the door. Yeah, WSD comes in hand. This is necessary, I guess. Oh! Can't really click to leave a place in those situations. When you, click, when you highlight yourself, every part of you becomes independently transparent. Can I climb, or...? Haha! No? I have to climb back up the ladder now. These controls, as you can tell, are only going to speed up the puzzle solving uh, process. Alright, well I got goggles now. Will that affect me looking at this thing, maybe? Right? I guess you just got stuck on something around there. No, don't go back down. 
Oh, God damn it. <laughs> this really is the best of, all, of uh, both worlds. There we go. I was pressing forward, expecting to go away from the ladder, but he turns around as he gets up the ladder, so he then goes right back. Come on, you gotta be able to climb cliffs. In a place like this? Another one here. I guess maybe I can run and jump to make it that far. Aha! Flying crane position! <laughs> Never expected me to do that. Alright, I I must have to go all the way back the other way. It's the only one I could reach from the ground. Well. Yeah, this is <laughs> This is a little rough. I'll probably get used to it, but it's a little rough just figuring out how to navigate. So we've been there already. Hot? Nope, not gonna look at that. Do goggles open door? <laughs> door does not glow when I look at it. The right click looks around, but only a little bit. You're stuck with fixed camera angle a fair bit too. Oh, cool. Go all the way around now. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Yeah, as you can tell, this is a marked improvement over point of, you know, just clicking to go to the next room and then being there instantly. This is skill challenge every, every missed player was hoping for. There we go. Oh, goody. was just here a second ago. He dumped me back down. Huh? I can make that jump. You catch that? Lime! Lime action hero man. No. Yeah, this is like playing the original Tomb Raider a little bit. <laughs> Alright, well thank you Mr. Bridge. Good thing this guy's very hardy, and I equipped him with boots and goggles, so he's, like, very capable of handling this dangerous situation. Uh... Where have I not been yet? That's, like, the, all the places, isn't it? Do I need to make a jump? Oh, I can't make a jump from there. But I can try! Ha ha! He actually, he actually does jump pretty far. I might be able to clear, like, the ravine, technically, if I angle it right. Let's see. I want to re-look re at this again a little bit. Uh... They're basically just talking about seizing destiny, aren't they? It's a letter- it's a letter from Atrus to Yisha. I should really read those- the missed books I have. They're just talking about a desert bird. Oh. Crap. I can get back up. I believe in me. Nope. Ah, whoa. Look at me go. There we go. Can I click on this thing faster to light up, light it up all the way? Why does only the thumb light up? What does that mean? This will probably go smoother over time, but at this phase of the level... Oh, there's one on that thing. 
at this phase of the playthrough, I'm definitely, like, I still need to figure out the boundaries of, like, like how my character behaves and what kind of interactions I, I can expect them to have with the environment. There wasn't a hand in here, was there? No, unless it's here. Nothing seemed interactive in here. This did nothing. Why does it do nothing? I want to drop. Whoop! There he just walked right over. Uh, is there a counterweight that I have to enable? Or is there... Can't really look around very well. Do I need to activate a counterweight? Do I need to fill it with water? Like maybe if you step on that thing, it lets itself drop, but I need to add weight to it so it will actually drop. Oh, I can probably jump across to that. Yeah, I can probably land there from jumping. Is that what I need to do to progress? Is platforming? Is that the mistake I was making? Nope. Angled that wrong. Does the weird... I get stuck on something in that direction. Nope, nope, you can't jump when you're at a ledge. Nope. No, I was... Oh, I was holding down W. You have to let go of W, then press W again to... No! <laughs> Stop. Stop. Hmm... Oh boy, so let's click, because that's that's less confusing to the game when, it, when it's trying to figure out what I'm what I mean. Ah! Not the best. I guess I, I guess I can just walk off here actually. Be easier if I could just look if I had, if I had better controls I could just tell what's in what direction at any given time. I gotta let's check the controls again. E map. First person is F1. That's a weird button for F1. I'm gonna mar map that to F. There we go, that's better. F is first. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, first. Oh yeah, look around. Oh, this is way better. Yeah, we're gonna play the game like this. Like, all the time. This is instantly so much better. There we go. Can't strafe though, which feels really unnatural. Uh, I could double check the controls, but I don't think there's unmapped strafing. Sidestep. Oh, there is straight. Okay. Um. Sidestep left and right. I could do... So, A, D, U, E. This will make sense in, to me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Alright. I mean, sure. It works more or less. <laughs> it just feels unnatural the moment I switch away from first person, because then suddenly I won't expect A and D to make me turn. Alright. Yeah, this will work for me. Cool. How about that? Can I go have that? Nope. Alright, so there's a button here that does seemingly nothing. There's some sticks. I have a way better awareness of my surroundings right now. There's a bunch of rocks. They exist. Joystick? Oh, it's a combination. Let's get the notepad out. It's not like I actually- I don't actually know what I'm gonna write on the notepad yet, but you know, let's prep it. Have that handy, I should have had it the whole time, but you know. I have limited desk space. So I don't think about it at first. Alright. Yeah, we don't we don't know what's gonna happen until I get my right, the right symbols and I don't have 
really any symbols to go on right now. Yeah, I can make this work, just holding down the right mouse button to look around and kind of walking around with, with mostly with just W and S, because sidestepping is not great. Oh. Oh. Hi. Wow. All right. Uh, square H, other thing, I don't know what to call those things, but I can figure them out. That was the H one. Oh, that was the, sh the shell one. That's the one I want to have up there. So you're supposed to be the H shell. The target reticle one. What was the other one? Ah, stopwatch. I gotcha. No? Targeting reticle. Shell. H. Those are the right symbols. Maybe it's not on? Maybe it's not on, or maybe it's... Hmm. Or maybe it's for something else. Poke around a little bit. Mortar and pestle, a bunch of sketches. About wiring being connected between two places. I, can I read this from here? It says generator battery. I can't read any of that. It's too high up. How about other camera angle? Nope, not any better. And this is in 1080. The game didn't ru didn't render in this resolution originally, so it's, that's that's how you know it's really unreadable. Look at that thing. I need to stop clicking fruitlessly until there's an actual thing that shows up that says I can click on it. Because every time I click on something, my character tries to rotate towards there because he wants to go to where I'm clicking. Like that. Like I click here and it wants to, he wants to go there. So at least to my character fidgeting around when I'm looking at stuff. But I'm just fishing for things to click on. Physics! Oh, this is the door that was behind. Those open you up, right? Or not. Cool. We're having a really good time so far with the doors and stuff. It's too bad sidestepping doesn't feel normal. Because my character would actually be pretty close to normal right now. It controls. With the only weird part being that I have to hold down the right mouse button all the time if I want to look around. But yeah, I can play this game in first person. That... Is that a what? Is that a jug or a instrument? I think that's a jug. That's a pouring ladle thing. Curtains and whatnot. Oh, hey. Found you. Did, did it do anything? Ah, it opened that. Okay. Yeah, it might be handy to leave first person mood sometimes just when I get, so I can see what I do. Because I'm looking down at that to click on that. Let's see. That opened. Uh, maybe this door, maybe this just works now. No. That doesn't work. So you just unattached, the, you, you let go of that. So now this thing, which probably rotates, can now rotate. Maybe it's ready to run this, this grinder. Hmm. Maybe something upstairs. What is this? This is just broken something. That's a knife, which I don't think I can pick up. I kind of get a better sense of scale in first person, too. It's kind of nice. How about you? What are you? Cool. 
minor frustrations aside, this is actually this is actually kind of neat because we're we're fishing around trying to figure out what these ruins mean and what they do the same way our character would be in real life because like they're just kind of at weird ruins. Just this is just a thing that showed up on Earth. Like, what's up with this? I want to switch the H and the shell. That's the best I can think of of why why it might be wrong. Like maybe it's mirrored. Oh. Can I right click on it? Nope. So I gotta go all the way around when I make that mistake. Ah shit. There I go again. Nope. Maybe it's just not powered. Okay. That's probably going to show like a hologram of Yisha or Atris or someone when I get to work. It's like VR. Seeing a place like this in VR actually might be kind of neat though, the scale of it, looking up and down. Action jump. I can do it. Just believe in me. Nope. 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 Well, now I can look at that one device. I can see it way better now. Well, I could just take a bucket or something and just use it to pour into this thing. Because up there is what I want. That's attached to that. It's probably supposed to, though, right? Nothing going on in the water. Kind of assume this goes nowhere. Oh, hey, I can see behind the door up here. So I know that there's there's stuff behind that door. Like that's an area. So like that's not just a thing I press where it'll eventually do something, like activate or whatever. I can physically go behind there. So yeah, this is the door I was trying to open earlier. So while it is closed, I've been behind it. So it's not what the stuff behind is not inaccessible. What is the door of? It looks like flowers and birds? Not a lot going on here. And I think he said my he said I think he said my goal was the tree, right? Which even the level design suggests that there's a cool handprint thing there. And the other ones are all hung up on tarps, but the 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 tree one is like carved. Maybe there's something else I can do, or maybe I should just ask him for another clue. Having him sitting around here to give me potential clues definitely reminds me a bit of, uh, abduction. Yeah, if you can't abduction, this is my sixth missed game? It's weird to think about, isn't it? And five will be my seventh. Oh, there's one on the back side of the trailer. That would have been good to know about. Did you mention that? Oh, it's a, it's progress. So I do need to find all of them and activate them. Yeah, sometimes the windmill seizes up. Try starting it up by hand. How long have you been grilling that? 
I'll admit it, I may have not fully absorbed or even understood everything he said the first time. I got a little distracted by the thought of like cuts. Uh, I was I was thinking like uh, subtitles. So no, there's no subtitles. I click on that. It looks like a lever. Am I too weak or am I- oh! Oh, it's moving this time. I tried that before, I'm not crazy, right? Alright. <gasps> oh! I'm not crazy, it was good to go down there and everything. Cause I started you- That's the thing that I unlatched, that moves now. The thing I loosened up that was stuck was holding this thing in place. Okay. These signs say, yeah, keep out. Danger. Yeah, this looks a lot like the landscape that abduction took place in. But you do not look like Atris, or the voice- or the actor that played him. <laughs> yeah, you're still missing the message she left for you in the armature. Make sure you see that before you enter the tree. Make sure you see the message. I already saw the message. He's weird. Is he like a tour guide? I'm wondering about that. Like, is he like a tour guide? Like, do people just come through here like I am all the time? And he's just always here to point us along the right path and make sure we get the little intro message before we're going on our crazy adventure or something? All right, well now this place works at this point. Yeah. Hmm. My question is, do you work? Aha! Look at all the stuff that works now. I really should just drop down that hole, that would have been faster. Thank God for first person camera. I will gladly go the rest of the game without ever having to steer this guy in third person ever again. Is that the end of it, I wonder? No. Nope. Yep. What? You glowed for a second there, I saw that. I don't think you did that before. Yeah. It glows for a bit. That Chick-fil-A logo. <laughs> yeah, that's moving down there now. You can see it. What do I do with that? I kind of want to let go <laughs> button. Just fall, it's fine. I'll never make the mistake of going down that thing on accident anymore now that I have first person, that's for sure. That breaks that particular loop. Although when he goes up the when he goes up the ladder in first person, he doesn't turn back around. Whereas when I was going when he go up the ladder in third person, he turns back around towards the ladder when he's done, which is a really weird move to make if you don't want people to immediately walk back down the ladder every time they try to use it. Is the progress yeah, the progress is shown across all of them? I've got the spiral, but not the fingers. I don't know what you're getting stuck on here. It's this ring, I guess. Can I go back in time and make this my character shorter? Was that an option? Wait, they don't get stuck like that? Oh, 
I will use them to bring me the least impossible. I don't know what that means. The beast? The least? Now his burden is mine. What I have learned must be... What I, what I have found must be returned. The takeaway seems to be that Yusha was here. Good jump. Good jump. Oop, yep, this is on now. Send me a message. Yisha got older. That's Yisha. Okay. 